so my setup hasn't really changed since uh, last year. Still riding my uh, 2016 Trek 920. Uh, though I did make a few few changes uh, compared to when I started the Trans Am last year. So just a kind of quick overview of, of what's going on. Uh, using the Ortley uh, panniers. Uh, one of the things I didn't have when I started the Trans Am last year was this here uh, Sea to Summit 20 liter uh, waterproof bag on the back. Uh, I found that uh, uh, the convenience of having a bag on top of the back rack was really nice for carrying food for the day, stuff that you needed to access rather you know, frequently throughout the day. Uh, made it easier rain gear in case it started to rain getting in and out of the panniers it always seemed to be a chore uh, john had one of these bags on the back of his bike and it worked out really really well so lessons learned from him uh i had picked up one of these actually i picked it up on the trans am ride last year so uh, uh i finished the ride with with the uh, the bag on the back there um Something else that, that was made things uh, better uh, compared to last year. You see here, I got what's called a click stand. It's uh, kind of like a uh, kick stand, uh, but as you can see, it's not the, in the traditional sense. Uh, when uh, I had originally thought about buying one of these before the Trans Am, and I talked myself out of it. But what it found was when we stopped somewhere, if there was no place to lean the bike up against, you know, I'd have to lay the bike on the ground. So I, I, I didn't like to do that. So I was stuck holding the bike up, doing whatever it was that I was doing. And uh, um, it, it just became a problem. Uh, so uh, one of the things that uh, John, again, had, he had to click stand in and just seen how easy it was. I didn't pick this up until I got back. Now, if you've watched other YouTube videos or people that use the click stand, uh, it comes with a, a brake band. So basically, it's a band that you would put around the brake handle, apply brakes to keep the bike from moving. The problem with that is is what uh, uh, we call wheel flop. With you know, the bike weighs right at about a hundred pounds. Um, with all the gear installed as you see it right here and what would happen is that front wheel would turn and it turns then the geometry of the bike changes the bike shifts around and then the click stand uh, ends up folding and braking and uh, uh, so very problematic so what we use here is this nice pink so you can see it remember that it's on there volet strap that one does two things it prevents the wheel flop from the steering wheel twisting when you when you set the bike up and two it acts like a brake because it, it's not going to allow the front wheel to roll so it makes for a very stable platform to stand the bike up you don't have to worry about the you know the bike rolling or anything like that and it's just the one strap like I said use the I got a pink band you know if you get off you know five minutes you come back you're not thinking you grab the stand you see that pink strap and it reminds you to take it off and it, of course it's not gonna allow you to roll the bike forward so you'll you'll definitely know it uh, so that uh, um, was was uh, a new ad uh, this little thing here it's just a binding strap uh, uh, I picked it up uh, a set of two of them last year on the ride uh, the other one broke uh, this one was still good you just don't know you might want to bind something to the back of the bike or somewhere and uh, what's it cost to carry on the on the seat post you know really nothing um, so yeah I got well I'll do the what's inside the bags a, a little bit later but uh, so I got you know bag on the left and the right got the the, the the one on the on the top of the rack uh, this little cable right there uh, will work in conjunction with my bike lock so if I need to secure the bike somewhere uh, have the option to do that uh, this little bag right here is a uh, flat kit 
So it's got a spare inner tube um, and uh, uh, a, a patch kit to repair punctures on the inner tube. One of the things that you would have seen on my uh, Cycling Across America videos is there was a stretch of about 11 days where I just had a ton of flat tires and le learned a lot about tires and the bike uh, with that. You know, I can patch tires all day long, but there were some little nuances that just couldn't quite figure out from time to time. And uh, both John and I had really figured it out. So I will uh, kind of go over that. First and foremost, if you're touring and you're doing any type of distance at all, the Schwalbe brand tires is the only brand to go with. Uh, I had put a new set of tires on before I left on the cycling across America trip last year and those tires didn't even make it to Rollins Wyoming before they were completely wore out John had the Schwalbe's I wanted to get Schwalbe's but the local bike shop didn't have any and so I settled for what they recommended and honestly nothing against the bike shop because they do a great job but the tires were junk so uh, um, on the trip last year I ended up buying the Schwalbe's uh, and, and I got those on. Now, one of the things with the Schwalbe's and the problem that I had with all the flats was was not punctures. I only had one puncture, uh, but there was a whole host of things that, that was going on. First, the spokes are offset, so they don't ride in the middle of the rim, and they're tubeless ready uh, rims. So, the the tubeless ready rim comes with a, a like a plastic type of rim strip that's super strong, super thin that you put in there. And I didn't have that on there. It had uh, I had Velox tape, which is a real thick canvas style tape to prevent uh, to cover up the uh, the spoke holes. The uh, just it's something you have to have on the rim. Uh, uh, what was happening these tires fit so tight on the rim it would move that tape and expose those spoke holes and then the inner tube when i'd put air in them would would herniate down into that little space and eventually rub a hole in and cause the tire to deflate so he had figured that out and had two sets of velox tape overlapping to cover the holes up so that wouldn't cause the problem so one wrong size Velox tape on a rim that shouldn't be using that tape, which the Velox tape works great in some situations, but because of the way this rim is made with the spokes being offset, it didn't work very well. Uh, the other issue that we found was this tire the, the, is a 40 by 622 or kind of equates to a 700 by 38 tire. One of the things that uh, we figured out was when I when I had purchased some replacement tubes because of all the holes that I was having in it, I, I found that all the holes that I was starting to get on these tubes were all in in different spots on the, on the wheel. They didn't line up with spoke holes, so it wasn't coming up, but it was on the inside of the rim. But closer examination of the inner tube found that the holes were at the welds where the rubber was put together okay what happened was is i was getting the right size tire or excuse me inner tube for the uh, tire but i saw on there it said thin and so what had happened is there was just that extra it was the tire was actually the, this the uh when i looked at the inner tube it said it would work for a 700 by 38 but it was too small for the 40 by 622 and what happened was it was pulling the inner tube apart separating at the welds once we noticed the difference and we looked at my tubes and, and there was another cyclist Brent from the Netherlands who had the right size tube obviously they were two different size inner tubes uh, so when I got to Prineville Oregon I uh, got the right rim strips uh, got the right inner tubes and and our problems uh, seem to just go away and I haven't had any problems I ride I commute all the time with this bike and haven't had any issues with flats 
So a big lesson on the inner tubes, uh, you know, making sure that we get the right size. Now, of course, I've, I've since purchased, you know, spare tubes that are the right size for these tires. And uh, I don't expect to have those types of issues again uh, for uh, the foreseeable future. So uh, kind of we'll kind of move along. So that that was that was a rough time there. Uh, one of the things that I, I carry is a 32 and a 48 ounce Nalgene bottle. Uh, the reason I use that instead of uh, the traditional water bottle is they're much bigger. Now, if you notice, I have what I think these are uh, Wolf Tooth uh, or oh, I'm sorry, Wide Foot uh, cargo mounts. And what I like about that, and I use the straps, is if I need to put something else on there, or if I use a traditional bottle cage, I can still use these mounts and, and get that carrying capacity that I wouldn't be able to get with uh, bottle cages. So uh, one of the things that I didn't start out with was this uh, uh, water bottle holder up on the cockpit. Uh, what was happening every time we'd want to stop if I needed a drink I'd actually have to stop take the bottle you know undo the strap get the bottle out take a drink of water put it all back together it was very problematic it was very slow very clumsy it didn't work very well so when we got to Missoula Montana at the uh, Adventure Cycling Association headquarters they had this um, um, water bottle holder for the cockpit I picked one of those up and boy it just made getting a drink throughout the entire course of the day so much easier um, that was a very good addition to uh, the bike setup so here you use it for storage you know to carry the water when I when I get empty I just fill it up out of one of the bottles and we can just keep on going so it's much much simpler um, the bag here is my tool kit uh, one of the things that I added that I didn't have last year that it, it's just me is uh, Carl had this really nice little uh, air pressure gauge. Uh, I found one uh, and had purchased it and, and that was really the only thing I added different uh, in here compared to the, the setup from last year. Still running the Brooks uh, saddle. Uh, I did get some proof hide and I've proof hide it twice to soften up the leather and just to take care of it. Uh, and then I still use the, uh, the Thud Buster uh, seat post which uh, it allows for it to take out that road vibrations out of the seat just to make it more comfortable. That's something I had for quite a while and I, and I really uh, really like it on the setup. Down here a lot of people ask me what is this? And that is the bike lock. Uh, that uh, uh, I got it just makes it a convenient easy place to store it's a bar style one so it's not the typical chain so it folds up nice and small and I can mount it down there on the bottom out of the way uh, up front uh, uh, there was uh, some uh, uh, minor changes one of the problems that I had was uh, this bike is equipped with through axles and the uh, the through axle design on the original had levers on it and the levers would stick out right here and what would happen is getting the bags on and off on this side of the bike both the front and the back was problematic so I talked to a Trek and they suggested buying these wolf tooth and then they had an original um, uh, through axle design that didn't have the, uh, the lever on it uh, to tighten up the lever. So here you have to torque it down. Um, I got a set of Allen wrenches because uh, the front and back are different sizes to tighten up these through axles but that lever is no longer on there and it makes getting the bag on and off much easier compared to to uh, how I had to do it in the past. So, kind of put that back on there. So uh, that that was a a change that I did. 
Uh, something I did after I got back from the Cycling Across America trip is I replaced both the chain rings uh, up front, put a new cassette and chain on, and and uh, those I kind of I wore the uh, ran it too long with a bad chain and it really started to show some wear on the the chain rings and of course on the uh, cassette. So uh, uh, we'll monitor that a little better just so I don't tear up those components. Uh, it won't be an issue for this particular trip, but just in general, you know, it's a real cheap, easy way to check it uh, and, and it keep you from having to spend, you know, $100, $150 on replacement parts uh, to keep your bike operating correctly. One of the things that uh, I had learned, uh, again, on the Cycling Across America trip is I do really like the hydraulic uh, disc brakes uh, the stopping power is is really good i like the way it, it the brake handles modulate but for touring uh especially when you get up there we had to adjust the brakes rather frequently across the the, the ride last year and in hydraulic brakes uh I, I don't have any adjustment to adjust each piston how the brake pad hits the rotor and uh it's very finicky on on those adjustments. Uh, the the style of brakes that were on John's bike, it was just a small Allen wrench. You could adjust the uh, where the brake pad is, and it, it, they were independent of one another, so you didn't have to unbolt the caliper, position the caliper, and tighten it down and hope it doesn't move. You just simply put an Allen wrench in and adjust, you know, the position of the brake pad on there. So I if you're building a bike or if you're gonna if you're thinking you need to put new uh, uh, disc style brakes on your bike i highly recommend going with uh, mechanicals that have adjustments for both brake pads independently of one another at the caliper it'll make uh, your tour a lot easier uh, to deal with when when it comes to your brakes and the stopping power that john had on his bike was just fine uh, so there was no real issues you uh, there uh, Up front, you know, I still have my air pump uh, mounted underneath the rack there uh, it, it worked good last year. There are some issues with putting it there, but uh, I've learned how to, to compensate for those issues and um, Hopefully that won't be a problem uh, this year um, also the little white thing underneath the handlebar bag is just a, a, a light for my inside the tent. It, it kind of illuminate the area inside the tent. And then the thing up front there is the uh, um, light for the front of the bicycle. Uh, I do have, I'll kind of bring the camera around the back here. Still have the three lights in the back. Uh, and I also have one on my helmet uh, that helps uh, They're super bright. These are uh, I want to say 300 lumens a piece and I have one on my bike helmet So you're looking at 1200 lumens of flashing lights uh, Letting cars know that you're there, which is a lot of light uh, You know almost as bright as, as that of brake lights on a car uh, so that will definitely uh, help keep you know safe from uh, cars coming up behind usually that's the problem and not uh, cars you know from the front because you can see those it's the ones coming up from behind you uh, we go up here and we take a look the cockpits a lot different than last year when I left last year um, uh, I didn't have this holder for my cell phone um, we used paper maps last year absolutely loved the paper maps uh, and and even with the after i picked up this holder for my cell phone i uh, still used the paper maps it's just it was really convenient to have this up here um, with the speakers and the design of this particular holder the speakers for the phone are down here so i could turn like pandora on have music you know not necessarily have don't need earbuds and you can hear it it's it's loud enough when you're riding uh, it was I've been tweaking on the setup and placement of all the gear in the cockpit 
to get it to uh, work for me and I pretty well got that nailed down now uh, this here's the light control for the headlight and the three tail lights uh, my Garmin I just use it for tracking uh, and not not so much for navigation of uh, of the ride uh, I'm just kind of geeky like that I like to go back and take a look at you know the the route that we took uh, this right here that's just a uh, selfie stick that's mounted to my rack that allows me to to use <clears throat> the camera and this is just a cover for the camera but I always rode with the camera mounted up here and then if I needed something I could just quick you know you know adjust the mount and get the camera out uh, on the other side over here uh, the bike computer that I had uh, the uh, sensor on the front wheel had finally had broke and I had to get a new one uh, so I went to the, my local bike shop and uh, and you know I kind of knew exactly what I wanted talked with the guys and they helped me find one that that I'd be happy with it's it's got the features that I want the thing that I do like is the, all the numbers as you can see are, are rather large and it makes it easier to read uh, the sensor for it though something new on the bike is I had I went with the dual trap sensor uh, that allows it to uh, not have the problem like the di it did up on the front wheel where it broke off so uh, um, that was that was a change there other than that uh, the addition of the feed bag again I, I finished the tour last year with the with this feed bag um, uh, and uh, um, I know it's going to work just fine this year. So, yep, that's that's the bike in general. Um, as you can see, uh, gonna, I expect to uh, to have a good time. I know, like I said, I'm gonna meet John in a couple days over uh, in New York, and then we're off to pick up Carl, and and then we'll go from there. So, yep, that's it. That's 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 the kitchen, the restaurant, the house, the home, the hotel, whatever you want to call it, all packed together on the bike and uh, just looking forward to getting started. Well, till the next one, we'll talk to you later.